Thank you for joining us today. Let's get ready to join our hearts together and sing.
What's up, everybody? Thanks for joining us tonight. My name's Shannon, and we hope you enjoyed worshiping with us. We're just getting started with the night. Tonight's gonna be a fun one, and one of the ways we have fun on Wednesdays is by interacting with each other in the chat. So if you aren't engaged in the live chat right now, you need to get there. It's really simple. Just create a free YouTube account or Facebook account if you don't already have one and participate in the conversation. And if you're watching with multiple people on one device, hop onto a different device and engage with us. But real quick, before we go any further, do us a favor and subscribe to our YouTube channel. That way you can be notified anytime new content goes up on our page. While you're at it, be sure to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at The U Ohio. It's the best way to stay in the loop and stay engaged with what's going on here at the U and at Faith Family. We want to see what you're getting out of Wednesday nights. So screenshot the templates on our Instagram story, copy your message notes or your favorite scripture to one, share it, tag us and tag a friend. Here at Faith Family, we believe that life is better together and it shouldn't ever be done alone. Connect groups are one of the ways we continue to do life together and stay engaged in community throughout the season. Groups take place every Monday night at 6 p.m. So if you aren't in a group or you wanna know more, visit the group's highlight on our Instagram page. This week, Devin and Josh are continuing our You Choose series. Tonight's gonna to be a good one. So sit back, grab your notebook, and let's prepare for this message. All right, well, wanna welcome you out to the U. So excited that you were able to join us wherever you're watching from, uh, your living room or your friend's house or whatever. We're just glad that you're with us. And I have a really important announcement about Devin. And you all should be really excited right now. Suspense should be at an all-time high. At the beginning of this quarantine, some of you remember the quarantine that we're now out of almost. And uh, you probably remember the beginning of it. There was a mustache challenge. Well, I happened to nominate Devin for the mustache challenge. And he didn't respond. And that was wrong. And so... He didn't apologize, and that was also wrong. But tonight, he's totally redeemed himself. <laughs> this looks so bad. Like, how is this good? He's accepted the mustache <laughs> challenge. This is amazing. It's amazing news. I I'm so excited. My only regret is that he didn't have it two and a half months ago with everybody else. And so now it just looks kind of strange because when everybody's doing it, right? Um, don't use that as a life philosophy. You shouldn't do what everyone else does. Don't follow the crowd. But it is amazing. I mean, I've never seen a Fu Manchu quite like that. I you look, look like, like an 80s baseball player, maybe. Uh, like if you put on like a Oakland Athletics hat right now, I feel like you could be a pitcher. Yeah, or like a dad off a bad 90s sitcom or... Ron Swanson, or I don't even know, but sorry. Comment you got in the comment section who you think Devin looks like. This is amazing. We're going to have fun, and he's totally keeping it for the duration. I want to hear from you, though. I want to hear your feedback. Should he keep it? Should he get rid of it? If enough people say he should keep it, guess what? Devin never disappoints. Just put that out there. <laughs> Dude, ah, this is awful. Uh, none of you guys better say Jeff Foxworthy. Um, that is, this is awful. Um, but anyways, so guys, welcome out to the U. Uh, thank you so much for uh, putting up with us and our weirdness. But man, we're in a series called You Choose. I can't even take myself seriously right now and I don't even see myself. Me neither. Uh, we're in a series called You Choose and you guys know what it's about. It's all about you guys get to pick the message. So we put a poll up on Instagram this past week and we said, hey, what do you guys wanna hear? We got these two subjects. We got um, overcoming anxiety or money, good or bad? Is it good or bad? A lot of people say money is evil. Um, the love of money is evil. Is that true? Um, and I want you to know, first of all, the Bible does not say money is the root of all evil. The Bible says the love of money. God doesn't care if you're blessed because how many of you guys know if you're blessed, you can be a blessing to other people. So I'm not gonna preach before we get to the message, but I want you to know that, that man, God wants to bless you so you can help others, so you can help others grow. So um, that's our two that are up today. Overcoming anxiety or money, good or, good or bad. So the winner for today's message with 78% to 22 is overcoming anxiety. And I want you to know this. If, if you're out there and I just mentioned how, you know, God wants you blessed and you're just like, 
whoa, 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 hold on a second. Like, somebody get that weird guy with a mustache off the stage. I do not agree with that. Um, we're going to put a, a series in the uh, uh, subject or in the comment section below so you can actually go to that and see, okay, what does God's word say? Because we never want to be the final authority. We never want the final authority to be, hey, so-and-so said this or a preacher said this, but we want to take you to God's word. So we're going to put a series in there. And again, don't take... The, that word for it, but take what God's word says for it and study the scriptures that are in that series. Look them up, make sure they're in there. Uh, make sure, you know, what we're saying is accurate. But guys, we want to show you what God's word says, bottom line. Today, we're going to be talking about overcoming anxiety. And man, I think, I think overcoming anxiety is something that all of us want to know how to do, that a lot of us in our life have struggled with anxiety at one point in time or another. And they actually say, uh, out of all Americans, there is 40 million of us that struggle with anxiety. 40 million Americans struggle with anxiety. And that's actually 18, a little over 18% of all Americans that are over the age of 18. If you're younger than 18, unfortunately, you're not counted in that statistic. Um, so it's actually probably even a greater number that struggle with it. And they say worldwide, and this is crazy, this blew my mind. Worldwide, there are 284, pe 284 million people that are estimated to be struggling with anxiety. And that's crazy. Like that's so many. And I want you guys to know that anxiety, anxiety is awful. Like anxiety is torment. And the Bible actually says over in Proverbs chapter 12, verse 25, it says this, that anxiety in a man's heart weighs him down, but a good word makes him glad. Anxiety can weigh your heart down. Anxiety can put you in a situation where God wants you to make an impact and make you feel like, man, I can't do anything. Anxiety is torment. But I want you to know there's freedom from that. There's freedom from anxiety. And you might struggle with something your whole life, but if it's not God's will, man, God not only doesn't want you to struggle with it, but he wants to give you the power to overcome it. I love what the Bible says over in Philippians. Philippians 4, uh, starting in verse six, it says, do not be anxious about anything. How many guys know if God tells you to do something, not only does he tell you to do it, but he gives you the power and the strength to, to bring that thing to pass. So if he says, don't be anxious, he's not just saying, hey, don't be anxious. Uh, go figure it out on your own. Get out of here. But he's saying, hey, uh, don't be anxious. I'm going to give you the power to do it. I'm going to give you the strength to overcome this. He says, don't be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God and the peace of God. Everyone say the peace of God. Yeah, that's you. I know you're not here, but you still got to do it. But the peace of God, uh, which transcends all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. He says, hey, man, don't be anxious about anything, but pray about everything. Take your worries to God, take your anxiety to God and, and pray about it because God doesn't want you to struggle with it. God cares about you so much. If you're cared about someone that you don't want them to struggle with something, maybe a loved one that uh, you saw go through something, maybe a friend that's going through something, you're like, man, I wish I could just take this burden from them so they wouldn't have to go through it. Man, that's all God cares about you. He doesn't want you going through anything. He doesn't want you going through any hardship, but he wants to bring you up and out of it. So if that's you, man, take those concerns to God. Take that anxiety to God and say, hey, I need help with this. And when you do, I believe God's going to step up and he's going he's to bring his peace, which the Bible says transcends all understanding. And I think for, for some of us, I think there, there's a bunch of different types of anxiety out there, but I think it boils down to two things. It, there's two types of anxieties. I think there's number one, wrong thoughts can lead to anxiety. But I also think there's medical issues. You know, there's imbalances, there's things going on. Uh, there's different reasons that are the cause of anxiety. It's not just because, you know, you were thinking on wrong thoughts. Like some people, it is like a medical imbalance. Uh, again, some people, it's just wrong thoughts, but some people, it is like something medically wrong. But I want you to know this, wherever you stand, whichever, whichever part you fall in, God wants you delivered from both. God wants you healed from both. There's freedom from both. So if anything, before we get started, just grasp that in your heart, that there is freedom from the anxiety you struggle from, that you can get free. Maybe you're, you're still questioning. You're like, I don't know. These guys are kind of weird. I don't know if I agree with what they're saying. Um, put your heart in neutral and say, hey, maybe there's a chance I can get free from this. Put your heart in neutral and listen to what God's word says. Not, but, not what we say, but what God's word says. Yeah, it's great, Dev. And we want to give you some practical steps to overcoming anxiety. And the first step to overcoming anxiety is to cast your cares. In 1 Peter 5, 7, it says, cast your anxiety on him 
because he cares for you. That word anxiety is the word care. Essentially, it's anything that is causing you to care, anything that's causing you anxiety, anything that's causing you to feel weight. And we've all gone through situations, circumstances, things that make us feel weight. And have you ever had a friend that you saw them going through something and you saw the heaviness of it, you saw them just in this situation and you're like, man, I wish... I could just take that on for them. I wish I could just take what they're feeling and help them with it. That's exactly how your heavenly father, our heavenly father, feels about us. He wants to take the weight away. He wants to take all of the struggle, all of the stress away from our lives so that we can live free and and really lightly to be able to do what it is that he's called us to do. And I think it's a vital it's vitally important that we know that that is how God looks at us and feels towards us. So we need to cast our cares. I love that casting It's a command in his word. It's not a suggestion, but it's a command. It's cast your cares. It doesn't say, hey, if you want to cast your cares, it's not an option, but it's a command. And the thing that Devin brought up earlier that I think is so good for us to recognize, anything God commands us to do in his word, he's given us his grace and his empowerment to be able to do it. So you might be sitting there and think, I can't cast my cares on him. I can't let this thing go. Stop carrying in your life what you were never meant to carry. You need to cast that thing onto God because if you're carrying what you were never meant to carry, eventually it's gonna weigh you down and get you off track. And there's a few things that you can do um, to go ahead and cast your care. The first step is to ask God for help. The second step is to surrender it to him. And then the third step is to thank him like it's already done. Like whatever the situation, whatever the thing that's been causing you stress, whatever that is, thank him like you already have the answer because by faith, you believe that you already do. It's super important and it's the only way to live in this kingdom and really live out what God has for you, his calling for your life. You can't live it heavy. You can't live it carrying a bunch of care. You gotta cast your cares on him. Yeah, no, that's so good. And I believe not only do we need to cast our cares, but we got to fix our focus. And what I mean by that is over in the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, starting in verse one, it says, therefore, since we're surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders in the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance, the race marked out, out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus. What does that mean? I, mean? I believe we need to fix our focus. We need to control our thoughts. We need to control the thoughts we're thinking. We need to fix our focus on him. That when those thoughts of fear, those thoughts of insecurity, those things that come at you, man, when those thoughts come, we need to fix our eyes on him. We need to fix our eyes on what his word says, what his promises say. We need to think on on his word, like verses that say things like, you're more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. We need to think about verses that say things like, perfect love, cast out all fear. When you're struggling with those thoughts that come your way, man, you need to reply with what God's word says. And I believe when you do that, man, God's gonna cause you to overcome these things. But I know what it's like. I know what it's like to, you know, be in a a situation where you get around people and you start having anxiety, social anxiety. And you're like, man, what are people gonna think? What are people gonna say? And your body starts freaking out on you. Man, I know what that's like. I I know what it's like. I had a friend growing up who, man, he struggled with anxiety really bad. And it would just be, man, you'd say one wrong thing to him and his body would all of a sudden start sending signals and he'd start, his body would start freaking out on him and he'd be struggling with all this anxiety just coming at, coming at his mind. Man, I know what it's like, but I, I know this for a fact too, that if you start thinking God's thoughts and what God's word says, you're gonna to start to overcome that thing. And I think it's interesting too, even studying this thing out, what the world says, not even what God's word says, what, what people who study this thing out, who study out how to overcome anxiety, doctors, uh, people like that, they say this, one of the main ways you can overcome it It's controlling your thoughts. It's controlling your thoughts. So when those thoughts come, when those thoughts come that trigger that thing, man, respond with God's word. Respond with what God's word says. Respond with thoughts that scripture. Respond with thoughts that say, hey, no weapon formed against me will prosper. Um, God always causes me to triumph. Find a couple verses for the thing you're struggling with and man, start speaking them over your life. Start speaking those things over your life. And man, again, if, if, if it's a medical thing and you're, you know, it's just like your body is just, 
freaking out on you and there's no reason why. I believe that, man, do what the doctors say. You can take medicine. That's fine. That's great. I believe doctors are doing the same exact thing we are. Um, they're trying to heal us. They're trying to help us overcome this thing just like God's word is. But man, along with that medicine, take scripture, find some scriptures. Again, you can speak over your life. Take that with, with, with what the doctors say. But every single time you start struggling with that, start speaking God's word and let God's thoughts start to change our thoughts. And you guys have heard me say this before, but I believe every single mind needs a bouncer at the door. You start getting thoughts that you know aren't from God, man, start speaking God's word over that thing. Yeah, I love that. Finding a scripture, finding the word of God that you can apply to your situation and then fixing your focus on that is so, so important. Um, the third thing is simply this, to keep the switch of faith turned on. Once you've found that verse, once you've found a scripture, that you keep your faith in what God says over what you might feel, over the thoughts that are coming, over what your circumstance might be. Um, scripture is always greater than whatever your circumstance or situation might be. And in Hebrews 10, 23, it says, hold fast to the profession or confession of your faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. It tells us to hold fast. And, and I love that because we, we talked about a little bit earlier what we need to let go of. We need to let go of the care. And it's important that you know what to let go of, but it's equally as important that you know what to hold on to. You've got to hold fast to the confession of your faith without wavering. And it tells us to hold fast because there are going to be things in this world that try to get us to let go, that try to get us to let go of our faith, that try to get us to lose heart, that try to get us so shaken and so moved by our situation that we're no longer treating the scripture as our main reality and as our main truth that dictates the way that we live our lives and the way that we continue to move forward. So it's vitally important that we hold fast to our confession, knowing that God's word changes things and that he is always faithful. I love that the end of that verse says he's faithful who promised. Can I encourage you that God is like Devin's mustache? doesn't disappoint, won't let you down. He's just just that good. And, and he's not going to let you down. He's not going to fail you. He's not going to uh, let his word be void. I love the verse that says, the word of God won't return void, won't return unto him void. He sent his word to accomplish something and we determine whether it actually accomplishes something in our life by keeping the switch of faith turned on, by continuing to say what God's word says and not say what we see. But if we continue to say what God's word says, it will change what we see. And so I believe wholeheartedly that when we hold fast to the confession of our faith without wavering, that we will see the faithfulness of God. We can live free from anxiety. We can overcome any situation. This is how we fight our battles. We fight our battles with his word in our heart, coming out of our mouth. His word is our weapon. And it's what we go into battle with every single time, especially against anxiety and the cares of this world. Again, know what to let go of, the cares, know what to hold on to, the confession of your faith. Yeah, that's great, man. And I just wanna encourage you guys with this. If you say you, you do struggle with anxiety, I want you to take this challenge over the next week and find at least one scripture, maybe two, maybe three. Write them down, put them on your mirror, Every morning when you're getting ready, speak those verses over yourself. Speak those scriptures over yourself because just like Josh said, those feelings will come, but don't let them shake you. Don't let them break you. Don't let those feelings be the thing that dictates how you're gonna live the course of your life because God's word never fails. Sometimes, man, we're believing God's word and it takes, it takes a second for it to show up in the natural. I mean, the second you believe it, you have it, but sometimes it just takes a little bit of time for that thing to show up. But don't let anything cause you to turn the switch of faith off. Man, keep that switch of faith turned on no matter what it looks like, no matter what it feels like. Man, we walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by faith and not by our five senses. So no matter how you're feeling, no matter what your body starts telling you, whether it starts giving you an anxiety attack or whatever, man, in the midst of that, say, hey, 
And I believe that God's freed me from this. Every time you struggle with, every time you get those feelings come up, I want you to say, thank you, Father, I'm free from anxiety. Man, start speaking that over your life. But man, find a couple scriptures and start standing in faith and don't let anything shake you. A lot of people say, hey, I tried it. I tried it and it just didn't work. Man, God's word never fails. God's word never fails. Don't let anything shake you. If you keep holding on and you keep just holding tight, man, God's gonna come to pass. So, man, I hope this encouraged you tonight. I hope you, you guys had a good time. I had a great time. But would you guys pray with me before we let you go? Father God, right now, we just thank you so much. We thank you for everything that was said tonight. Father, I pray that you just remind us throughout the course of this week that whenever feelings of stress, anxiety might try to attack us, that God, you help us to respond with your word. You help us to speak your word, to believe your word. And Father, we thank you as we hold on to you, as we hold on to your promises. God, your peace, which you promised, transcends all understanding. God is gonna set us free. And Father, anxiety, worry, it's nothing compared to you. And Father, we thank you that you said every knee must bow, every name that can be named must bow to the name of Jesus. So right now we just speak to anyone who's dealing with anxiety and we just command that anxiety uh, to leave. Uh, we say it's got no place in your life. And Father, we thank you that your peace that passes all understanding is gonna impact all of us. It's gonna make a lasting impact in our life, not just for tonight, but for every day here on out. So we just thank you for that. And Father, we give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you so much um, for tuning in tonight, guys. And I just wanna give one quick invitation before we let you go. If you're out here and you're saying, hey, I don't know this Jesus you guys talked about tonight, this God that I can cast my cares on, this God that cares for me, that doesn't want me going through anything. If that's you, I wanna tell you this. The Bible says that you can know you have eternal life. A lot of people say you never know. Um, you never know if you're gonna get to heaven. You guess we'll find out when we get there. But I want you to know the Bible is very clear and it says you can know you have eternal life. You can know you have eternal life. And Romans 10 says it like this. It says that if you believe that Jesus rose from the dead and you confess him as your Lord, basically that just means you give him your life and you say, God, God, here you go. Here's everything. Man, the Bible says you can know that you got heaven as your home when you die and you can have heaven on earth while you live. Isn't that incredible? But if you never prayed that prayer, if you've never just surrendered your life to Jesus, I'm asking you to pray this with me right now. You're not talking to me, you're talking to God. But I want you to say this. I want you to say, Father God, I thank you for sending your son, Jesus. I believe that he came to this earth, that he died on the cross and then he rose from the dead. And I confess Jesus Christ as my Lord, and as my savior. And from this day forward, help me to live for you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you so much. If you prayed that for the first time, that's incredible. That's the most important decision you're ever gonna make. So guys, we wanna celebrate with you. Our hosts are gonna be coming back out in a second and they're gonna give you more information of what the next step looks like. We don't wanna leave you where you're at, but we wanna show you what the next step is on your journey of faith. Well, guys, hope you had a good time. Josh, I hope you had a good time. Absolutely, always a good time. Uh, I'm gonna go home and probably shave my mustache right now because- Please don't. I, it's gotta I look, stay. It's gotta stay. Come I on. look awful right now. <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you guys so much and uh, love you guys. And uh, we'll see you out next week. Wasn't that a great message? We hope that you leave feeling encouraged, inspired, and full of hope. If you made that decision tonight, either for the first time or you rededicated your life, we are so excited for you. The Bible says that when you pray that prayer, you are a new creation in Christ. So text you made new to the number 94,000 and we'd love to connect with you and help you discover your next steps in your journey with Jesus. Also, if this was your first time, thank you so much for joining us. We just wanted to say welcome home. You are a part of this family, but we don't wanna leave you here in your journey. So text THE YOU to 94000 to discover your next steps here at Faith Family. Once again, thank you all for tuning in with us tonight and we will see you next week. <laughs>